him, any of us. It right? was not JPL. It was not any member of the imaging team. It was a. It was a one of these civilian scientist imaging types working through Reddit or, yeah, I, I think this was posted on Reddit. And since everybody uses pseudonyms, it's, it's pointless trying to credit anybody because nobody yeah. wants to stand behind their work, which I find dumb. You know, if you want to be credited, use your real name. So it's yeah. an unnamed, very good imaging in, individual, a, a civilian, who's done what JPL should, of course, do, and puts together these mosaics and the first super cam image that you're working from was taken maybe two, three weeks ago. Yeah. They've now moved the rover several, you know, almost a thousand feet further south, and they took another super cam mosaic uh, yesterday, and they posted that in the raw images, and we're in the process of assembling that, so we will have stereo, because these are, this is not a flat wall. This is a series of bas-reliefs literally sculpted out of this 100-foot high, 300-foot wide, circular, quote, cliff. That's not really a cliff. Anyway, continue. Yeah. So what I did last week is I focused on you know, one particular feature on the, you know, way over to the right on the more, the more uneroded side this uh, what uh, yeah, remember this NASA. is a round structure so yeah. this is a it's not a side it's not a side exactly it's like side of a roundhouse yeah and on the on the far right that's turning the curve around to the northeast and the north which has been protected from the prevailing winds at Jezero which blow from the south and southwest so there's much more erosion damage on the left hand side of this set of freezes and I use that name specifically, you might define what a freeze is, and the erosion gets less and less as you work your way from left to right. Yeah, well, freeze is a good way to put it, Richard, because freezes are, I mean, Ron could probably address this better than me, but that's usually like a small section on a building, uh, you know, line, uh, Ron, how, how would we term this, lining the top of almost like a above it, like just just below a roof line it would be and, and it would be sort of telling it like a sculpture telling a story but coming out of the um but it'd be small and more like a detail but you're right richard in a way this is it's kind of like what it is because it's, it's a bigger structure right or what we think is a is a temple but i guess a ball relief is probably a little more appropriate because it really is something that's sculpted out of well if this thing is really ancient this, this what we think is a, a, a you know a, a, a temple of some sort. Then these we're thinking that these later people literally carved into the more ancient you know structure. And this is the kind of thing we see on Earth, right? And I'm going to come to that later in um, uh, one of my other posters. But last week I took a little screen capture of one feature that I think stands out very well, which I was saying it's a cat. I've done the same thing again this week to start off. But I want to show something else that there's an added detail. So if you go to my number one and you look at what I boxed out and then you just scroll down the page. And what I did is I enhanced that little area a bit and I brought out the features and then I kind of did my own digital painting of it. And I kind of just like last week. And it's actually on the show banner, I believe, Richard. We've used that for the show tonight. And to me, it looks very feline. Like it literally, literally looks like a lion face. But here's the thing, and this is one quality that we've seen over and over again in what we believe is art on Mars. And it's, it's a term that Keith Laney has often used, and that is something called nested art. So if we go out of this, click out of this, as I say, this is just a review from last week, kind of, and go to my number two. It's called Wall of Faces Nested Art. And what mm. I did is I, yeah. Oh, is, wow. Oh, you found him. Yes. You found the little kitten under the big cat. <laughs> and, Richard, there might be a third, but I just didn't have time. Like, literally, look, we've been talking about this, that these these people, the, the Martians, were literally putting images within images within images. And it's not something that you can literally process all at the same time. You have to kind of, you know, assess one you know, larger piece, and then within the larger mm. piece... The mouth or nose might make up yet another face. And we see this over, you know, we see this in Mesoamerican art. 
we see this in Hindu art. Uh, again, Ron could probably, you know, bring more in on this than I can. Well, the first but example that I laid out at the UN back in, what, 92, was that the infamous face of Sidonia is a fusion of a left and a right half, that the left half is hominid, primitive proto-human, and the right half is feline, looks like a lion, like a huge lion. And then as you look at this, this mile-long, 1,500-foot-high statue there staring straight up into space, you see that there are other faces and other representations in the classic face on Mars. It's the biggest example of this uh, nested art or fusion art or juxtaposed art or multi-meme art, meaning that the artists, artists plural, the Martian artists, were exquisite experts at communicating many different things with a piece of art simultaneously. Yeah, which in so many ways to me, Richard, um, and this is a conversation Ron and I had earlier this week, we, were, we started talking about those weird 3D posters from the 1990s. Remember, it was just like a, like all these repeated patterns, and it would just look like a visual mess. I, I, again, Ron, sorry to keep bringing up Stereo, Ron. Auto-stereograms. Auto-stereograms. Remember those, Richard? Were those, Richard? were those the ones made out of plastic where you had multiple rule lines that were kind of synthetic holograms? No, they look like uh, they look like the charts that an eye doctor will have you look at to test the color blind. Oh, you're talking about the random dot thing. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. It doesn't have to be. It can be embedded in another image. It doesn't have to be on an abstract background. And uh, the that's that's what that's what Andrew was trying to allude to here. And he's right. There, there's a lot of controversy over what to call this stuff because it's not a normal facet of art on this planet, but people are aware that it works. It goes straight up. Yeah, and, and those old posters, you'd have to stare at them for, you know, quite a while, and then suddenly something in, you know, there'd be a pattern that would come out, an image would appear in the middle of this poster, and it, we were almost, we were playfully talking about this, going, gosh, this art is almost like that, because, Richard, I'm, and now that you said there's there's another angle on this, on this, um, Ball relief or, 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 or this freeze, mm. I have a feeling we're going to see not not just what I think we found here, but even more faces. Of course we are. And remember, just a couple of weeks ago, we said, wouldn't it be nice to have another you know, image taken from a different angle? I think I said it last week. Yeah. And then lo and behold, three or four days later, the JPL team promptly does exactly that and provides it to us. And we'll next week, we'll report on what we find there. And maybe if we're really lucky, on. we can have Tim in the computer synthesize the two views and give us a computer modeling, which probably won't beat your artistic eye, Andrew, but it'd be nice to have a separate opinion, yeah. a, kind of an AI opinion of what's there. But there's certainly a ton of stuff that's still there after all yeah. these millennia of erosion. Yeah, and that's the key word is, two key words is millennia and erosion. Goes I mean, this stuff on. is battered to hell, right? And a lot of it's sort of um, sagging, and you know, there must have been a whole bunch of things that happened to this art. Well, look at the talus slope below this yeah. vertical 100-foot, give or take, cliff. You can see all the pieces, kind of reminding me of that uh, James Taylor song, Sweet Dreams and Flying Machines and Pieces on the Ground. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, listen, another thing about this is that you you repeatedly see faces in this thing and you repeat and even if it's just very subtle you can see and especially what looks like human proportion faces in fact richard some of these sort of um leonid faces almost look kind of like half human half cat to me like i'm going it's kind of moving from a cat more to a human now that could be because it's so eroded and it's just getting, you know, the details are getting lost, but some of it just looks like they're showing a deeper meaning. And and you talked about a lot of this art is almost like cubism. And remember cubism, the cubists were trying to look at all sides of, of a three-dimensional object. So like a person, let's say it was a, I don't know, a, a painting of a, of, a, of, of a model, of a female model. And what they were attempting to do was examine all the sides, 
And this is the kind of quality we get in the Martian art, which to me, again, this is a conversation we've had you know, many times, it speaks of multi-dimensionality. Yes. It's almost like, yeah, like their minds are, are operating on many levels simultaneously. It's, I, I, I said to you, or the art is intended to communicate multi-dimensionality. Yeah, and I tell you, Richard, I, I was so excited this week looking at this stuff because, honestly, you could write a thesis on this wall, even just from this wall, because it's amazing. It's a, there's, there's a story being told here. This is, this is the thing, and I, and I don't know if that's my next poster. Well, let's come let out of me, here. Let me go look. Okay, so we want number three. I know, okay, so I did a little more breakdown, so I called this um, Wall of Faces Seek and Find. So... Again, Go anybody straight can on. do this if you just sort of randomly move around this this magnificent. Um, excuse me. Uh, uh, oh, look at the Darth Vader character. Oh, Richard, it's or everywhere. maybe it's, maybe it's Lon Chaney. <laughs> I'm telling you, if if you could here, I, I you know number one again, it looks to me that it looks almost a bit uh, feline again. Again, I I could be projecting a lot, but there's some here. Some well, Andrew, a face is a face is a face. Yeah. If, 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 the, if the meta message of the statue at Sidonia, the face on Mars, was that genetically we are a fusion of hominids and feline genes, which has been my favorite model for years and years, and I've done a lot of background genetic research into cats, and we are the closest relative of cats that are that's not a, 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 another primate. In other words, Cats are the closest other species genetically to human beings. I mean, isn't that special? Given that there's a mile-long thing on Mars that's screaming that into space, into the night. And you know another beautiful quality about Go cats? That's one thing I've noticed. I mean, we have two cats, one that's uh, an old fella, and then a, a young one that she's just two. And they're, even in their, as they age, there's this beautiful... Um, pride about these animals and they have this gorgeous chin i thought that was just about lions <clears throat> well i i mean all cats they have this this very distinctive chin that just you know comes out and gives them this this very i don't even know how to say it just a, a just a very proud look and um i'm noticing that in the art is that the, the, the chin always comes out and, and there's a little bit of the sloping forehead back and you see this consistently whereas with these images, I'm definitely seeing either, you know, humanoid type uh, faces or these sort of crowned, kinged faces or even beards. I mean, again, heavily, heavily, heavily eroded, but they're there, Richard. And there, are, and you, can, and anybody can go. I mean, look through this stuff, and you can just doodle your way to mm. finding. It. And again, if if it's the old man in the hills, I can see finding it once, maybe twice, but 50 times in one. Like, come on. on a freeze, which is 300 feet long, projected plan view, actually 288 to be exact, and almost 100 feet high, and looks and to be divided into panels. Yes, it does, and it sits out there on the landscape, because, you know, the way Perseverance is sitting out, taking shots of it, and it's meant to be seen. That's another thing. It's just so beautifully designed in the landscape. Well, it's all the faces up. are facing the crater, the dome, the city that was in Jezero Dome. So everybody in that dome could look and see this extraordinary work of art, which with any, you know, pair of binoculars, even if you were 30 miles away, you'd be able to see. Yeah. And you, and you made the key comment, Richard, is when we see something in panels, when it's artistic, and Cynthia and Ron would attest to this, is you're telling a on. progressive story and i even though this thing is in you know is it's in shambles and it's hard to read and we all may read it a slightly different way i well, can't not that bad well you're right Ron, but what i can't help getting the feeling guys and gals is that there's a rhythm to the panels there's something there's almost like a a, a, a pulse like like a like a an artery a series of arteries running well through in this the thing. middle and it's so eroded that I can't really tell where it's supposed to be there's something which is framed it's two panels wide it's under a, a an arched 
almost yes. like a doorway, and it's huge. It's, it's it's easily 100 feet wide, and it's so eroded. I can't tell my I can't tell what it was supposed to be, but I have a feeling it was the central figure of this tableau of this storyline. And doesn't it sit perfectly right in the well? middle yeah. of this yeah. roundabout yeah and it and it's it's almost like wings opening up on both sides and so you just in, intrinsically instinctively feel this pulse this this some this kind of story all right if if there are folks out there and i don't want to interrupt but let me do two things one housekeeping bob keep refreshing your page and when your stuff comes up let me know just break in it's very informal you know because i can't read in the skype window um and back to what we're talking about if this is a story, if it is a history, it's a history, remember, in the model that was left by us. We're not projecting on alien psychology. We're simply looking back at human psychology on another world. And what would we all do if we were there and wanted to tell a story? So we're looking at human psychology just in a different era, a different time, and a different planet. And I think that's the key, Richard, is I, I think I said to you the other day in one of our chats, uh, you know, pre-planning and, and all that, and just going back and forth with information, is that I, st I just began to immerse in this stuff, and I literally felt my own, <laughs> my own blood, you know, sort of rising up and going, oh, wow, and, and, and I'm like, holy, and, and it's like, yeah, it's like a mirror. It's like you're meeting yourself again, because I, I kept saying, I would love to sit and talk to these artists. I'd like to actually see if I could relate to them. And well, I can, because it's exciting. See, right? the most shocking thing to me of all of the decades I've 